Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. <laughs> well, look at that. <laughs> yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Seriously. Charlamagne the God, Angela <laughs> Yee. Envy is not here today, but we got two special guests. We got Marseille Martin and Kelly Rowland here. What's happening? Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. New movie, Fantasy Football. Yes. Starts November 25th. Yes. What's that about? Well, it is about fantasy football. It's <laughs> wow. You know, people love their fantasy football. No, yes, legit. Like, do. you know, add my dad to it. Like, he, he loves the whole concept. And yeah, basically, it's about the whole Coleman house. I play Callie Coleman, which is the daughter. It's Keisha Coleman, which is my mom. And hey. then Omari Hardwick is my dad, who is also an NFL player. And he's been in the game for a long time, you know, won a Heisman a long time ago, but he's still in his career, but then again, he's kind of in that age where he needs to retire. He's a point. great bench player. Like, he's a great yeah. bench player, yeah. you know. Everyone <laughs> agrees that he should be stepping out of his way, letting someone else, you know, lead the path, but he still believes in himself. And uh, his daughter, which plays me, which plays me, which I portray, <laughs> Callie, um, is really great at Madden. She's mm -hmm. very tech savvy, super smart, mature, beyond, beyond her years. And long story short, the craziness happens, and she ends up being able to control her dad in the game Madden. So whatever he does in real life, it's because of her. So he, she controls every. every well, this is a different type of fantasy football. No, listen, yeah. it's like yeah. a, it's like oh. you know, um, it's like a play on words. It's you like know? a Freaky Friday type yes. of the way that it all happens. What I love about your role in this is that as a young woman, mm -hmm. you're super tech savvy, but also great at Madden. Because I think typically we don't look at like a young girl that's sitting there playing mad and beating all the guys and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's exactly her. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And I, that's what kind of drew me into it is because it was so unique. And I know there's so many girls out there that love those type of games. Mm -hmm. And I, like with me as well, I'm not good at Madden, but I am a big video game person. Mm -hmm. So being able to uh, portray someone like that is pretty dope. Now, Kelly, you're a mom in real life. See. Not to of no 18 year old though. No. So when you get that call, you're like, what do you mean y'all want me to play the mom of an 18 year old? I was actually down for it. I okay. was like, let's go. Got you. You know, I'll just be a young mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it is something to think about. You know, what's going on right now, like say with Tom Brady, he retired, but then he, you know, decided not to retire and yeah. then his relationship suffered from it. And just seeing that kind of, I thought about that, mm -hmm. you know, watching this and how that plays out because it's kind of like, okay, you've been playing this long and we want to just settle down here and stay in one place mm -hmm. and not have to move around. And, you know, the disappointment, though, that a man would have who's been playing in the NFL his whole life, mm -hmm. that's all he knows. And his ego really can suffer, mm -hmm. you know, from being told, OK, you're not going to get no playing time, you know, and this younger up and coming uh, NFL player could be the face of the brand and it just I'm sure for any man who's played in the NFL will make you feel a way because we always are like why doesn't he just retire right yes. exactly and that's that's like the whole point of the the whole entire project mm -hmm. we have Rome Flynn who plays the new upcomer quarterback like you know ready to take uh, Bobby Coleman's spot which is, of course is Omari so it's it's all that for sure yeah are either of you in the actual fantasy football like real live fantasy football uh, no. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love your, uh, no. Uh, no. Do you have a team? You? Do you have a no. team in real life that you uh, like? No. Uh, no, it's usually Tim's team. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is the 49ers. Uh, but I do love watching Tom Brady. I I loved watching Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. He had like a different kind of like monster mentality, mentality for yeah. sure. He was a monster. Yeah. It feels like y'all got like a sibling relationship. More than mother daughter. Like even when I see y'all online doing like the TikToks and all of that kind of stuff, <laughs> does that play out in real life? Like, how did y'all develop that in real life? Yeah, I mean, how would you describe it? I mean, our bond. I don't. I don't really know. Cause a lot of people yeah. are like, "Oh, she like your auntie." I'm like, I don't even know. I really <laughs> don't. Like, she's just such a cool person to be around, and you know. Yeah, I, so I think kind. in the back of my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, you're good. You're good. But, um, I think in the back of my my head, I'm like, gosh, I'm not ready to be auntie, guys. Although I am a mother, <laughs> yeah, too. But I'm not ready to no, be No, you're auntie. not. I heard you on Blue's album, Young Blue. Oh, yes. The song Freak Freak. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, she not no auntie. <laughs> Why are you looking yeah. at her so judgmental, Marseille? <laughs> when what you heard mean? the Freak Freak song. No, I didn't. Oh. I was not judgmental. Okay. No. That's a great song. <laughs> you know, I, I like the title. It's like, okay. Break. You know, Marseille people would talk about you online too in that Savage Fenty show. Uh, she killed yeah. it. 
<laughs> you did though. You she did. She killed, killed it. it. She is grown <laughs> and she killed it. Say something. <laughs> Say something. Just because you watch this girl grow up, that does not mean that you know maybe you think she's your niece in real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the truth is, is she's eighteen. Like I, I do remember, like you know, people like feeling like they should probably like you know say well you you're still too little or we they've watched you grow up mm -hmm. in front of their eyes so they feel like they kind of like uh, not on you but no they don't want to see you they don't want to see you on you no like like you know they they feel some type of protection over you and yes, you know i, I would protection. you know i would expect that i mean yeah. for sure especially watching me for so long like they've watched me since i was eight yeah mm -hmm. so you know i think a, a lot of people will will think to themselves like oh like she's growing up too fast or whatever yeah. but I, I believe i'm i'm on the right track i'm on the right pace i'm doing what i love and it was tasteful it yeah was, i mean it was and tasteful. You looked amazing and i feel like i'm all like you know i can't speak for everybody else but i believe I'm always I'm always like that and I always mm -hmm. stay true to myself and you know I would never put myself out there like that if I didn't want to yeah. so you know I, I think like I'm 18 now I'm stepping foot and you know eventually you gotta kinda come into your own and that doesn't mean body wise or whatever I'm just meaning just overall mentally in life you know but so. Marseille gave them a walk Yes, she did. <laughs> she gave them. The I walk said, okay. At like four or five o'clock in the morning she while we were really filming, did. right? So that's what threw everybody off. She came out there with this body and this walk, and she was like, "This is the moment." And so you can relate it. to that feeling because for yes. you growing up in this business, and people saw you as a teenager, yeah. And then it's hard for them, like you gotta, you know, it's make so it, it takes a long time. You kidding me? The women at my mother's church would pull my skirt down. <laughs> like when they saw, and it was already to my knees, like uh, uh, almost to my knees. But they would always be like, oh, yeah, baby, to be talking to you and just slowly put your shirt down or fix your top so you, it's closed. Like, I still have people do that to me. I'm 41. Who the hell still does that to you? No, somebody, look, I'm, let me put really somebody real quick. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, did, why? <laughs> did you realize that October 27th, just a few weeks ago, was the 25th anniversary of Destiny's Child? No, no, no. Single being released. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Octo yeah uh, I think it was October 27th, <laughs> 1997, yeah, okay. maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> how does that feel? How does, you, how does, how does that feel now that you know that? Oh, 25 years. Like, I am blessed to still be here in 2022. Ay. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yes. Ay. And thriving and also helping other people thrive, too. And I think that's important. Yeah. Just the experience that you've had as an artist and then helping other groups, too. And other people in the music business. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. that's good. Mm -hmm. Marcel, you also produced this? Yes, I did. Congratulations. Thank Another you. one under the belt. Another mm -hmm. one in the book. It's me and my company. We're very, very proud for sure. What's the dynamic of starring in a film that you, you produce? It's hard. It's it's very underrated how hard. Really? For sure. Explain. Break that down. Well, I mean, well, one, with this one in particular, it was such a quick turnaround because we filmed it back in April. So now that it's coming out later on this year, you have ADR. We started editing like a week. Uh, after we wrapped, it mm -hmm. was just a whole bunch of stuff that had to come into play. And, you know, especially for press, like bringing that on as well. It's just such, everything is so quick. But um, my parents are also part of my production company. My dad is president. My mom's vice president. So, That's uh, fire. yeah, it's pretty lit. It's pretty lit. And I'm very, very happy that uh, I get to be in this journey with them for sure. You think you're going to have to fire one of them one day? I mean, I could, but like, it's best that I can't. But we, like, me and my parents, like, Look at her. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Little Bobby's crazy. <laughs> but you know, me, my parents are just they're. I feel like I always say they're built different. Like they are so real. They're so kind, and like I just feel like I can tell them anything. They're like my best friends for sure, and um, they they don't like. Even though they are like my coworkers in a sense, they still see me as their daughter and they want to protect me and keep me safe as well and making sure that I'm in um, the lane that I want to take on my own. But when it came to set, like, I would observe, I would see things, uh, you know, I had a bunch of people around me as well. So, you know, w during lunch, we would be talking like di different things that I noticed, different things I would see and then vice versa. And that's kind of how it went. But Man, it was hard. Mm -hmm. It was really, really hard. But you know, I am I'm very grateful that everyone is excited. We were excited filming it and mm -hmm. creating it and um 
yeah, I think it's just magic and overall just even creating a film. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't really care how how the streams are or how many people watch it. The fact that we made a film with great people that we loved and support and brought everybody together that we really do care about is just, you know, a big accomplishment in itself for sure. I feel like it's going to do really well because it's super entertaining. Thanks. And then fantasy football is such a big deal. Like, yeah. everybody's so into it. And I think just the premise of it, I've never heard this as a storyline. It's hard to create something that hasn't been done before. No, right? absolutely. And I, I think that's the beauty in it as well, especially if it, you know, people are intrigued and interested about it. But, um, it also helps, too, that Madden and EA Sports are a part of it, too, so mm -hmm. we can really be realistic and uh, make sure everything is down to the T, for sure. And there was a lot of meetings revolving around that and making sure... The brand. <laughs> like, the brand. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, there was, a, you know, I see scripts, of course, as drafts, and then also, like, the movie was re-edited multiple times. Mm -hmm. So when we brought it to Madden, they are like, oh, you can't do that, or oh, we don't do that, yeah. or, oh, wow. they're supposed to put this on. Like, you know, we, we had to make sure all of those things were down to the T, so I'm very grateful that they were a part of it, too. And it was so funny, because my dad is a big football person as well. So when it came down to what team my Bobby Coleman was going to play for, <laughs> Hilarious. everybody had, right. like, for the meeting, everyone had Broncos gear, or dad would be drinking from a Raiders cup. <laughs> I was like, bro, like, it ain't, like, it ain't gonna help. But, you know, we're really glad uh, we get to kind of shine a light on Atlanta, like, like we did in this film for sure and we can tell you come from like a healthy black family so when you're producing how important is it to see healthy black families on the screen oh it's beyond important for sure i feel like um it shows authenticity it shows real realness and i think having being able to have an opportunity to work with people like kelly and omari and just to just to see people in different families of all different cultures just exist mm -hmm. and be able to just have regular conversations that you would have in your own households is very important for mm -hmm. sure. You know, mm -hmm. so now yeah. Kelly, people have been wanting you to play Donna Summer. Mm -hmm. Is there any talks about that, or is it? A I'm real just gonna thing? be quiet for right now. I'm just gonna be quiet. Oh for right shoot, now. that means it's in the works. I'm just gonna be quiet for right now. Cause she has a fascinating story. I read she really does. I read David Geffen's biography, a, uh -huh. and so a lot of that story also focuses on his relationship. Um, you know, business-wise with Donna Summer and the things that she kind of went through. Well, the funny thing is, is you know, I, I think that there's so many beautiful things happening with her estate. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really, I, I can't say too much. I'll just shut up. So when they <laughs> I'll just be quiet. So when they reached out to you and asked you to play the role, oh, stop how did it. you? No, no, stop it. Don't stop it. This is very, very early. But what I will say is that Donna has, Donna Summer, excuse me, has an illustrious life and mm -hmm. it's so beautiful and I think that seeing it on screen would be so incredibly entertaining and mind-blowing and worth watching for anyone. I agree. And um, yeah. I know you're gonna kill it. I cannot wait. You are so funny. <laughs> <laughs> that, I cannot wait. <laughs> is that, I mean, I'm not, well, just hypothetically, is that pressure when you're a musical artist having to play another musical artist? I mean, when you start to look at all these different, um, uh, what's love got to do with mm -hmm. it, to uh, how many are there? And like the great ones, like right. really impact culture. So when you're doing it, you want to impact culture the way those films did. You know, mm -hmm. we still talk about the five heartbeats. Mm -hmm. We still talk about the American dream. We still but the talk five about five heartbeats wasn't a real. I group. just found I know that it was out. Like, what? But when Robert Townsend was here, I found out it wasn't. Oh yeah, a real it wasn't group. a real group. Right, yeah. I know. But it, I mean, you you find these places to and you hear these stories to base it off of, like mm -hmm. all these different things. But, anyways, it's yeah, it's it's a lot. It's so beautiful. I can't wait. And you're also a person that who one day somebody's gonna be playing you in a biopic. Ooh. Is that? Wild. Of course. Yeah, that's going to happen. That is going to happen. You too, Marseille. Right. Huh? <laughs> right. You too, Marseille. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm going to play you in a biopic too. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever thought about who you would want to play you? I haven't. Would you want to Look, I said. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. No, 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 no. Oh. No, I know I'm not going to put no, 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 no. Oh. But I don't, I, I, act, I haven't Girl. even thought about it. The, the interesting thing is I haven't even thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. And, when time comes, I will see if it comes. If it comes. It will come, for sure. Because your story is beautiful. Thanks. Marseille, who helps you with your finances? Because somebody in this room blew $30,000 in 30 minutes when they were younger. So who helps you with your finances? My parents. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, as soon as I turned 18, um, 
I had a whole meeting with my accountants and everybody who is in charge of finances in my family and my world. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, that's one of the first things you think about when you turn 18 is like, you got to pay bills now. You got to mm -hmm. figure out houses or where you got to be. <laughs> and, and I was like, worst yeah, ever. I know. That sounds, <laughs> yeah, it's sad. But I think uh, having the parents that I have, they were very like making sure that I just easily. Of course, I still live with them. Mm -hmm. So, but I do have investment property kind of Ooh. everywhere. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very, very yeah. grateful. Oh, Miss Roland, who let you do that? Who let you spend that thirty thousand? Well, 30 no one minutes? lets me do anything. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but I know. In, in my, I got. I mean, I have kids. I I, I have like res, like full on like responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Like when it's it's not just the house. It's like the kids and they school and mm -hmm. extra money your school might want. Like even now, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. It's so many different things, but definitely investments i'm having a lot of fun with investments as no they're fact, fun right and now. exciting and you get yeah. to flip houses they're and really stuff. fun when they work cool. out no they, they are fun <laughs> they work and out. when you lose that money that you were like <laughs> i i did this for that you know you get yeah you, you're definitely like bummed but i do think that the earlier you find out about your finances mm -hmm. the better you are on the other side the no, more responsible sure. you are on the other side I, like i said i've had money, lost money, had money again, and I'm grateful that I'm in a space now to where I'm like, oh, I'm learning, and this is fun. Now it's fun. I don't like to, to you know, cut the check and see, mm -hmm. like, that part of the taxes go. I'm like, dang. You know what I mean? But you understand how the world runs and works. Yeah, so, for yeah. sure. But I, I thought this was in the beginning of your career when you spent that kind of money so what? fast. The 30000 in 30 minutes. I know I did. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, not now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not now. Okay. What was it on? Well, sometimes that happens if I see art. Yeah. Art, okay. That's a good I, I do love art. Uh, this is Marseille, you know, like the world of art. Yeah. You know? So I was like, ooh, this art. Me and actually, me and Marseille went back and forth at the mm -hmm. wearable art gala because we both wanted a piece so mm -hmm. bad. Yeah, it was so, Kendrick. Yeah. Who got it? I, yeah. Neither. <laughs> Wait, did yeah. well, I mean, we didn't get it. We didn't though. get it. Somebody else actually from Houston got it, I found out. Y'all drove yeah. that price up and then someone else swooped in and got it. Yes. yes. <laughs> Basically. For All sure. proceeds went to Waco. Amen. Hey. <laughs> well, Kelly and Marseille just had to do a quick drive-by, okay? Right. But uh, fantasy football, November 25th. I want those donkey of the day sandals. I'll get you some. Okay. I'll absolutely get you don't some. Don't take those. No, these are... No. Don't take those. You don't want these. <laughs> Okay, Marseille. All right, we get it. All right. We all did that. Don't take those. I wasn't specific. But. November 25th, Fantasy Football. Kelly and Marseille, thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you for having us. That's right. It's the Breakfast Club.